It, so, so tend to it does go um, a bit to that question about where storytelling sits in each culture, and because you you move between cultures, there's the culture of your of your of your mother and the Métis culture, and then there's the white culture. From the outside, it looks to me that there's a difference in storytelling reflexes in the two. They serve different purposes. I you suppose, but I am the mix of those cultures. So, you know, I, I, I am an observer in that place where the stories are held. And uh, because uh, in my Métis world, I heard, I was privileged to hear some of the traditional stories of Waisake Jack. Uh, but it was also at a time where these things were underground. So they were told hush hush. And some were not told. Because there are people that have gone to jail for performing the high mass. Here's an example. Of, of, of what was sent underground. The Cree word for fire is esquiteo. It's made up of two words, esko, which means woman, and mete, which means heart. That's profound. And, and it goes to our lifeblood and something that we have to keep fighting for today. So there's that world. And, um, and in, in Métis, we have, we have a character that I haven't heard anybody talk about. And I sure hope I can find somebody who knows those stories, Tizan stories. Uh, this really, you know, big, powerful lumberjack, and probably in the, the Quebec cultures, that story That's is. That's right. That's yeah. right. The super sized lumberjack, who is yeah. part supernatural, so to speak. Yeah, I used to hear some of those stories. But that's, that's Metis. That's Metis, yeah. Because in the King Lear, the fool and the trickster were perfect. I mean, that was stunning the way that came together like that. And I think the trickster or raven is one of the First Nations characters that are, is coming up and just inhabiting lots of bits and pieces of, of white culture. I think Bill Reed, his idea and him, you know, Spirit of Haida Gwaii, I mean, that's my most favorite statue in the world, piece of sculpture. And that is Bill's Haida side and Bill's Scottish side speaking together. And it's a very powerful union and expression that comes out the other end. And thank God it's in the Canadian Embassy in Washington because it's the most iconic uh, sculpture that I think this country's ever had. Yeah. Well, Regan was a raven. That was her base. And uh, the raven is throughout so many cultures. Very smart bird. So I don't know, what was your question? It was the two kind of the two roles of storytelling in in First Nations culture and Cree culture and Metis culture and then in white cultures, and whether there's a collision of that in your life. I don't know. What is, what is storytelling role in white culture? It has been twisted in the commercial sector. They've twisted what I think is sacred storytelling. You know what? I don't think stories are, are white or otherwise. No, I said white culture. I said white, white commercial networks. White, white commercial. Yeah, I said well, white commercial. Well, commercial culture yeah. uh, on, on any level, you know, is uh, it's about money, right? So, uh, for example, Irish culture. The Earth people were 
decimated there. And, uh, and they were treated the very <coughs> same way as indigenous people here were treated. Um, for example, our relationship with the earth. Lake St. Anne in Alberta was a sacred place for Indian people way back when. And the church were having a difficult time tearing the, the Indian people to their power base. One of the tactics that they've done all over, all over the planet, is that they go where the indigenous people gather and put their stuff on top of that. Mm -hmm. And that's where they built their missions. That's where they, you know, start pounding in their stakes. So they take over that place. And uh, I like my friend, my late friend, Floyd Westerman's term is that he called it churchianity. 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 Certainly nothing Christ would have done. Right. And, uh, and I think it's the same way with our stories. The, the sacredness has to be remembered and respected. And I feel very fortunate that in my early days in theater, um, I, I had um, teachers, like my first directors, where I see them as teachers, who, who talked about uh, Greek theater and the stage being a sacred place. That I could respect and, and, uh, and gravitate to. And one of the things about film that allowed me to, to walk in was this was the first time that I saw people from the white culture noting sunrise. <laughs> and sunset. Right. And what the weather was going to be. Right. The wind. All of that stuff was on. And I thought, ah, I might be able to live with these people. Might be able to be around here. Because those are the things that are important to me. The Greek plays, it was not only a sacred place, but the purpose of telling stories in the Greek culture was to maintain and restore the harmony of the universe. That the harmonies had to be maintained through storytelling. That was the purpose. Yeah, it's entertainment. People laugh. But to tell those stories is to restore and reinforce the harmony of being. So about balance, about wisdom, and about the way things are supposed to be. It's, it's uh, uh, illustration of, of foibles and beauty and all of that. <laughs>